three days until the non-Brexit happens, and Boris Johnson tabled a motion to call for an early general election. With this, many MPs abstained from the vote. The reason why is because they don't trust Boris Johnson, which was the focal point of the entire argument, which appeared to any normal person with an IQ over two to be nothing more than a pre-planned way to try and character assassinate him in the run-up to a general election. Many believing that Boris will force through no deal during the election itself, or force no deal shortly after the general election, with them favouring him instead, taking no deal off the table, even though a deal was agreed upon, therefore no deal was not applicable. Whereas others like the SNP and illiberal undemocrats have tabled a separate one that removes it entirely because they want to revoke Article 50, something Jo Swenson herself said, to essentially say, we're not going to leave cause. Ignoring the will of the people and something she herself said in 2008. Not a joke, I saw it on Twitter, which means it must be factual. The SNP, while saying they don't support a bad deal and Boris Johnson's deal is a bad deal, also simultaneously say they don't support any deal because they don't want to leave and Scotland, of course, should have the perk of being recognised over everyone else that voted leave. It's not like there are leave voters in Scotland, after all. Their motion has been tabled today, and initially the Labour Party were reluctant to agree to it, because much like the Conservative-led one, they didn't want to agree to it because, and they don't trust the parties. Joe Swinson does not want the Labour Party in charge. Lucky for her, really, he's not going to win the next general election. I would like to take this opportunity now to tell anyone that is British to register to vote now, because this mess needs to be resolved. I have a strange feeling the turnout's going to be high. Something also that got mentioned during those debates is that the SNP and Liberal Democrats want to lower the voting age to 16, something I do not support. The only reason they want it is because they consider, because of their character assassination of those who are considered right-wing, to be bad, and therefore you can only vote on the left. And also because younger people, and I remember this myself, are very idealist, which is hardly ideal when it comes to campaigning on very important issues that younger people tend to not fully understand. That's not to say older people do either, but I'd like to believe a little more patience on the older people's part serves them better than the youth's rather brash attitude. It is widely believed that today's motion being brought forward, Boris Johnson has one, so does the SNP Lib Dem Little Coalition idea, to have an election on December the 9th. If it happens, I have a sneaky feeling a pact is going to be made with the Brexit party. Boris must now be aware that now he has broken his promise, or will have in two days' time, there is no option for him where he doesn't lose more seats. There are already 44 MPs in the Commons that have resigned and intend to stand down at the next general election. He will lose more seats unless he works with Farage. Because while people can trust the people that is that Boris might get the job done, he will not be able to command enough of a majority to see it through. Jeremy Corbyn will not win the next general election because he is not good enough because all he has done is say what he might do and then contradict it at the next possible opportunity, because his policies are to spend, spend, spend with zero accountability, which is hardly a surprise considering the Blair years. Ooh, but we prospered until we crashed. Ooh, we don't like illegal war, so we go to illegal war. And so on. Labour want to support a number of policies I can't agree with. Open door on the country is certainly one of them, it is why I voted, one of the major reasons why I voted leave. I will stand by that. Another issue that this all raises is that the Speaker of the House, John Burko, said he would step down when we left the EU. But that's now been postponed by essentially three months, where we are now awaiting the legal text to confirm it. Which makes me wonder if he intends to honour his pledge of the 31st of October, or whether he will postpone it until the general election, if the general election even happens. If it does happen, he may just stand as an MP, because it's unlikely he'll get a peerage at this point, considering what he has done and how it looks as far as optics are with regards to benefiting predominantly Remain voting amendments. There is a shift, and it does seem to lean that way. I'm not going to say he is a Ramona 
in disguise. That's for you people to decide. With what has happened and what is going to happen today, I'm very interested to know what you think. I myself am becoming even more frustrated with this, but I'm also acutely aware of just how tasty things are about to get. Because the last thing you want to do when you're given an extension is waste more time. So having a general election to get a majority, which is unlikely for any party to be honest, is going to make this even more complicated and lead to more stonewalling and inaction from a group of people we elect to represent us, who claim to act in the national interest, but do everything to go against what their constituents say, as if their constituents, i.e. their bosses, are secondary to them and their perception of what is the national interest. Instead of thinking globally, act locally. Because honestly, at this point, you are doing everything you can to harm your country instead of finding a way to prosper together. Because left is bad, oh, and right is bad, oh, and center is bad. No one cares about whether or not you're on the left or right. People care if you are correct or not, or whether you keep your promises. 